State got a win, but as usual, their offense was inconsistent in a 31-14 victory over Maryland on Saturday. And the normal players and the normal coaches, the normal people we're used to seeing in the headlines are still drawing the same criticism after such a performance. Head coach James Franklin, even uh, offense coordinator Mike Yursich is getting some of the blame now, and of course, quarterback Sean Clifford. One group all season long has been directly in the crosshairs of Penn State fans, and that would be the offensive line, who has played below average, to be kind. So, the newest person in the list of examinations by the Penn State fans as to well, what's this person doing about it would be offensive line coach Phil Troutwine. So today, we're going to take a look at his coaching resume. We're going to take a look at how he got to Penn State and see if he is what he was billed as. Now, to give a brief backstory, Phil Troutwine was hired as the offensive line coach after several seasons of Matt Limegrover uh, the former offensive line coach at Penn State. His services were no longer retained, and Phil Troutwine was seen as an upgrade as a coach that was coming from Boston College, had uh, been the architect of a prolific rushing attack at Boston College, and a man who, as you'll see in a minute, was highly regarded by the coaching industry. So is he that? Before we get to that, first off, Blue White Illustrated has a brand new home. It's called On3. Penn State is now part of the On3 network, and it's going to revolutionize the way you listen to, cover, and read about Penn State sports. You can sign up with the link in the description for just $1, and you get 12 months free. So make sure you check that out. And of course, subscribe here to our Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel and hit the like button on the video. Helps people know that this doesn't suck, which is what we're going for. That is what we're going for. Uh, so Phil Troutwine. His, let's just throw it up here, his resume. I did some Googling, I did some reading, and luckily, unlike me, his resume is on the internet. Please don't Google my resume. I have no idea what's going to happen if you do that. So here it is, and I'll just read off you the, the highlights here. This is from gopsusports.com. Troutwine was named one of the 35 under 35, recognizing the top football coaches under the age of 35 in all of college football. He was the only Big Ten coach and the only offensive line coach on the list. Now, in the last three seasons, according to gopsusports.com, he has mentored 13 all-conference offensive linemen. His first season at Boston College, where he was previously before Penn State, as the offensive line coach, he mentored Chris Lindstrom to an All-American season, first team All-ACC, all and BC's top offensive lineman. Lindstrom did not allow a sack all season, and just three hurries in his, in his final season at BC went on to be the first guard selected in the 2019 NFL Draft with a 14th overall pick by the Atlanta Falcons. In addition to Lindstrom... Other All-Americans, other All-ACC players that he uh, was able to coach, John Baker, Ben Petrula, and uh, several other players, including uh, Montero, who was signed by the Miami Dolphins. That would be uh, a uh, Aaron Montero, excuse me, was signed by the Miami Dolphins. So this is always what it comes down to, is did you get guys into the NFL? Did you coach them to the highest level? One of the ways that we can examine a coach's ability to coach up players. Did they reach the heights of their potential? So in that sense, yes. But again, a part of his coaching resume is the fact that he has been an offensive line coach at Boston College for two seasons and now at Penn State for two seasons. If you're 35 under 35, it means you haven't been coaching for an extended period of time. So it's important to note we are still early in Phil Troutwine's career, but he took over from a, an offensive line coach at Boston College who recruited all of those players, and that would be uh, Justin Fry. Justin Fry spent five seasons at Boston College, and I'd read to you his resume as well that I read over at the Boston College website, but here's the reality. Whether it's uh, the number of yards that a coach is able to coach his players to get to, whether it is any specific statistic when it comes to output, those can all be influenced and massaged and given in good light when it comes to this, the, the individual person you're trying to attribute them to. 
What I'm trying to say is Boston College runs for a lot of yards because that's what Boston College does, right? So if everything that Stephen Fry did, uh, excuse me, Justin Fry, everything that Justin Fry did was all a part of the BC lore that you already know. He was the play, he was the coach that recruited all those players that Phil Trout won coached to their all ACC or all American honors. So does that mean that Penn State got the wrong guy? That Phil Troutwine can't recruit and develop coaches? Well, I took a look at some kind of overall rough and dirty, get you right to the point sort of metrics. And when this is what we're going to be taking a look at today primarily is we're taking a look at the uh, PFF grades for run blocking and pass blocking and pass blocking efficiency. These are general numbers that are standard across all levels of football and across all divisions in college football. It specifically looks at, especially in pass blocking efficiency, the offensive line's ability to pass protect as a unit. And again, that's the whole point of the offensive line is to coach them to coach as a unit. So Boston College, very good at running the ball, 240 plus yards for the last five, six seasons. The first thing I'm going to say is that Steve Adazio, the head coach, has a lot to do with that. Part of that picture is Justin Fry, the former guy who is now at UCLA with Chip Kelly, and Phil Troutwine, who is now with James Franklin at uh, Penn State. But Boston College still runs the ball. That is still their primary mode of transportation. So as much as the offensive line coach is an integral part of that, the system and the scheme and all that stuff is not dictated by the offensive line coach. So if we want to take a look at some of the metrics that are, are important in this situation, the first thing is that Justin Fry, when he left Boston College and went to UCLA, they did not get demonstrably better at anything. So under Chip Kelly, again, the system and the scheme of the spread offense with Chip Kelly, vertical routes, short passing game, running quarterback, hyper-athletic running quarterback from the spread offense. All of those things play into your rushing stats. All of those things are important when it comes to the offensive line production, but they are a part of it. And truthfully, in a spread offense, especially in an RPO offense, the offensive line is de-emphasized. This is a group of players that when you want to uh, hide them, that's what these schemes are trying to do. It's in the true passing situations that I think the coaching abilities come out of your offensive line coach. And then, of course, in run blocking and the ability to generate yards uh, before contact. Now, again, UCLA has not been high, ranked higher than sixth in offensive line pass blocking efficiency. In fact, they were dead last in the Pac-12 for the first three seasons under Justin Fry, or the first two seasons. They've gotten reasonably better, but this is all just to paint the light of where Boston College was before Phil Troutwine got there. And I think this is the most uh, illuminating evidence of what he's done so far in his career is the improvements at Boston College when he took over in 2018. Now, again, 2017, you see here, those are the numbers under Justin Fry in pass blocking and run blocking, according to PFF. And again, this stuff is standard across all levels of football, so that's why we're using these for consistent numbers and comparison. Phil Trotwin immediately came in and had those same players playing at a much higher level. The run blocking ability went from 10th in the ACC to 2nd. From pass blocking, 13th to 7th to 2nd in 2019 before he left to go uh, here, uh, come here to Happy Valley to uh, coach for James Franklin at Penn State. And again, run blocking stayed relatively high, 4th in 2019. So his ability to improve those players and to help them get better, that is all real and that is all a part of his coaching resume. But again, we're talking about a coach who is in his fourth season. I think the biggest thing that I take away from looking at Phil Troutwine's resume is that he's never recruited his own players and then coached them for long enough to develop anybody individually. He's taken players that were there, and this is by no, by no means is this a criticism of his ability to recruit. It is simply a fact of where he's come from by being the offensive line coach for only two seasons at two individual uh, destinations. So what does Penn State have in Phil Troutwine? I think it is fair to say that he is, as a former 
um, ACC all, excuse me, all SEC tackle in 2006 and 2008, helped a team under Urban Meyer at Florida go to a national championship, an expert technician at the position. I've seen him coach in person. I think he understands exactly what it needs to, what needs to be done in order to get uh, good play out of players. And you can see from a overview perspective that he has improved players at the places that he's gone. Now, the production at Penn State, that part so far has been a little bit up and down. But the reality is Matt Limegrover was, was let go for a reason. Unlike Justin Fry, who was, was hired for a new position and is now the uh, offensive coordinator at UCLA, uh, Phil Troutwein was brought in to improve the situation. And it has not happened just yet. But I think that's where it's important to remember this is his fourth season as an offensive line coach. Uh, he was previously an assistant at several places. So while he is a respected member of the, the coaching community, while he's part of the 35 under 35, this is still early in his career. And we don't know the full picture yet of what Phil Troutwine is as a coach and as a developer of talent. He has yet to bring in a, co a recruiting class and develop them throughout their career. He is now in year two. And he's bringing in, in the class of 2022, truly his first recruiting class. Now, those players, if you want to check out some of those uh, scouting profiles that I have of them, and for the class of 2023 as well, where he's done work with some verbal commitments, including Alex Birchmeyer. He is a four-star interior lineman in the class of 2023, one of the best in the country. You can check those out here on our YouTube channel, T. Frank's Film Room, to fill in the gaps of what Phil Troutwine is bringing in to the program. But is he a good coach? I think the limited evidence that we have is yes. There is tangible evidence. And I went into this looking for evidence, and I went into this looking for information. Early on, I thought, okay, he's only coached for four seasons, and he uh, was able to, and a lot of this is built off of, you got a guy in the first round of the NFL draft. You had a unit that played well. A lot of times, that is circumstance and coincidence that you are in the right place at the right time with the right players. But you do see in those PFF numbers that he was able to develop players that were not his and take them to a higher level. Now we'll see, because the players that he's working with right now, clearly there's a disconnect between what he's trying to teach them and what they're able to do. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've seen on film is that what he wants them to do, drive block, play with power, uh, move players off the ball with a good body lean in position. The majority of them are currently not able to do that. So does he need to find players that can do those things? That's going to be the next step. But from you, the Penn State football fan, what that's going to require is one of the hardest things. Patience. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's the reality of the situation. And the reality of most situations is there needs to be more information. Right now, the development is not there, but there is still more to be done in this area. That'll do it today for the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If there's any other situation, there's any other story developing, we'll make sure we cover it here on the BWI Daily. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you tomorrow.